Hello and welcome. I'd like to wish everyone a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Thanks for joining us. My name is Tiffany. I'm a part of Kinkley. Kinkley's mission is to promote conversations about sex, answer readers' questions, and ultimately help you all discover more about sex, your bodies, and pursuing pleasure in ways that are safe, healthy, consensual, and fun. Today, we're proud to present our webinar, Prostate Massage 101, the ins and outs of prostate play. This webinar is being presented by Aneros, a great company that we just love working with. Before we get started, just a note, today's webinar is being recorded and we will send out a link to the recording shortly after the end of the live presentation. So you can listen to it at your leisure or listen to it again. We'll do our best to keep this presentation interactive, so feel free to enter your questions into the GoToWebinar console as we go along, and we'll get to them at the end of the presentation. This webinar will be presented by Forrest Andrews of Aneros. Forrest has had a relationship with Aneros beginning in 2002 and has played an important role in the evolution of the company and their products ever since. This began when he was a customer and purchased his very first device. The impact on him was life-changing, turning around a decades-old health condition while revealing a powerful new orgasmic experience he would later call the Super O. After a series of productive conversations with owners of the company, Forrest became their sole product tester. Soon after, he helped them launch the Aneros Forum, where he chronicled his own personal journey and research on the power of the prostate. In later years, he compiled the Aneros Wiki, Compromise, or comprised of terms drawn from his several thousand posts and threads. Between 2003 to 2013, he mentored hundreds of men, helping them transition to new, new levels of sensual awareness through prostate massage. During the same period, he attended public and industry trade expos in the US and Europe as the company's expert on the use of the devices. In 2016, Forrest became Aneros' manager of product and business development, where he supervised the creation and launch of the award-winning Trident series, the Trident Sin series, and the Vice 2. We're also fortunate today to be joined by Michael Case. Michael is new to the Aneros team, but has caught on quickly. Working in the marketing department, Michael helps with everything from securing partnerships and promotions to assisting with social media. Michael is new to the industry and is fascinated and excited by the new ideas, trends, and challenges brought on by it. I am very grateful to have you sit back, relax, and enjoy this webinar. With that, Forrest, please take it away. Well, thank you, Tiffany, for that wonderful introduction, and thank you, Kinkley, for having us here today. For many years, the idea of prostate massage was synonymous in most people's minds with one thing, a trip to the urologist. But over the last 18 years, the concept of recreational prostate massage has attracted a great deal of attention with the prostate gaining a reputation as the male G-spot, a legendary source of earth-shaking orgasms. In this webinar, I'm gonna focus primarily on recreational or erotic prostate massage with respect to history, methods, and benefits. I'll also touch on therapeutic massage, particularly from the standpoint of its role in awakening interest in prostate pleasure. But first, the basics. What is the prostate? The prostate is a small muscular gland about the size of a walnut located between the bladder and rectum of people assigned as male at birth and cisgender men. Also known as the P-spot or male G-spot, the word prostate actually comes to us from the Greek word prostatis, meaning stands before or in front of, which describes its position in front of the bladder when the body is viewed from the top as when it's reclined. In the standing position, it appears below the bladder, as you see in this diagram. The prostate plays several important roles in the male reproductive system. First, it produces one of the fluids that makes up the cocktail that we know as semen or ejaculate. Prostatic fluid contains nutrients that help sustain sperm and a substance that helps keep semen in a liquid state. Second, it provides much of the pumping force that propels semen out of the body in an ejaculation. Third, and most importantly for our discussion, it houses a bundle of sensory nerves known as the prostatic plexus that are involved with sexual arousal. Prostate massage has a long history relating to health and pleasure that dates back thousands of years to the teachings of Tantra in India and the Tao in China. Tantric teaching described a system of subtle energy centers of the body located along the spine called chakras that were believed to be the basis of physical, mental, and spiritual well-being. 
The prostate was associated with the first or root chakra and the second or sacral chakra. Balancing energy and chakras was considered key to achieving well-being. In the case of balancing the first and second chakras, this was attained through a number of techniques, one of which involved massaging the prostate. In Taoist traditions, spiritual and physical vitality were said to be derived from a primal life force called qi. Taoists believed that ejaculation drained qi from the body. For evidence of this, they pointed to the fatigue and sleepiness that follows an ejaculation for most men. They believe that ejaculation for sexual pleasure alone depleted qi unnecessarily and was to be avoided. But the Taoists were not unaware of male sexual desire either. So as a substitute, they developed a practice that is known today as injaculation, which is basically an orgasm without ejaculation. The method involves masturbating up to the point of no return just prior to ejaculation and stopping it with an acupressure technique using pressure against the perineum. That's the area between the anus and scrotum that we sometimes call the taint. So how does this produce an orgasm? Well, to start with, it turns out that the pedendal nerve, that's the sensory nerve that supplies the penis, anus, and scrotum, runs very close to the surface of the skin of the perineum. It's this nerve that's largely responsible for ejaculation. Co coincidentally, it also turns out that massaging the perineum stimulates the prostate gland indirectly. It's actually the best place to stimulate the prostate externally. So pressing this area at the right moment allows one to block ejaculation while stimulating the prostate, which results in a prostate orgasm. This Taoist method essentially was sensory redirection, taking arousal generated from one place, redirecting it into another. Western culture, unfortunately, was very slow on the uptake when it came to prostate massage for health, and references to it for pleasure were practically non-existent. For hundreds of years, diseases of the prostate were treated by applications to the perineum in the form of irritating ointments, heat, cupping, and leeches. Yes, leeches. In, 1980, excuse me, in 1894, prostate massage came into popular use when it was adopted by the Royal Institute of Massage in Stockholm, Sweden. For the next 70 years, it was the gold standard in the West for the treatment of chronic prostatitis, prostate, prostate inflammation, and BPH, which is enlargement of the prostate. In the 1960s, the development of antibiotics for treating urinary diseases basically replaced prostate massage as the standard of care. And for the next several decades, references to it for health or pleasure were few and far between. In the 80s and 90s, things changed up a bit, thanks to two developments. While the Western holistic movement began in the late 60s, it wasn't until the 80s that it really started gaining popularity. The concept was modern medicine was too focused on drugs and medical technology for diagnosing and treating diseases. Holistic practitioners took a wider approach. Now, these doctors had the same degrees as traditional physicians, but also had additional training in herbal, nutritional, and other alternative therapies. Many of these practitioners recognized the inadequacy of drug therapies in dealing with some of their patients with diseases of the prostate. This had them looking at the more old school approach of prostate massage once more. Around the same time, the first in a series of books by Tao master Montak Chia rekindled the idea of the prostate as a powerful center of sexual fulfillment. Chia introduced the West to the practice of ejaculation that I mentioned earlier, formally presenting the concept that orgasm and ejaculation were actually two separate events, not one in the same as most people assumed. In his framework, ejaculation was but one possible result of one arousal pathway. He described ejaculation essentially as an orgas orgasmic limiter. In his book, The Orgasmic Man, Multi-Orgasmic Man, uh, he explained that separating ejaculation from orgasm ends the restrictions so that a man can have one orgasm after another, experiencing multiple orgasms at will. Now, while Chia's books were groundbreaking for their time, they were never really able to cross over to the level of mass appeal. Why? 
For one reason, the injac ejaculation technique itself required time and patience to acquire, and many men found it difficult to achieve. The idea of bringing oneself to the very point of climax only to stop it just short of the point of no return was the very definition of sexual frustration for a lot of guys. And without the compensation of a prostate orgasm or some other kind of release, all but guaranteed a raging case of blue balls. In other words, pain and discomfort, two words that most people don't readily associate with self-gratification. Simply put, without some kind of payoff, most men figured, why should I struggle with this when I can have an orgasm within minutes the old-fashioned way? Chia's work undoubtedly enlightened many about the potential wonders of the human sexual response, but ultimately fell short of connecting prostate stimulation with orgasm in a real way for most people that they could experience for themselves. That connection was not far off, though. And it occurred from a seemingly unlikely source that brought together prostate health and pleasure in an eventful way. The year was 1994 in Tokyo, Japan, where a certain Japanese urologist had been providing patients with in-office prostate massage for the treatment of chronic prostatitis, chronic pelvic pain syndrome, and the symptoms of BPH. Having had a great success with it in his practice, he theorized if patients were able to do this in the privacy of their own homes, they might do it more often to even greater benefit. With that, he sought out and came in contact with a Japanese inventor living in the United States. By 1996, the first hands-free self-powered prostate massager was invented and patented. Anatomically designed, this product was made to work in harmony with a man's body, providing focused prostate massage from anal contractions only. For the next several years, the product sold well as a health device, receiving rave reviews and testimonials from satisfied users. At the same time, an increasing number of these people began to contact the company about a peculiar side effect, namely a completely unexpected, very intense, dry orgasm as a result of using the product. Over time, so many of these reports came streaming in, the company realized they had to start marketing the massager for pleasure as well. And with that, the Aneros brand was born. Within several years of the product's release, sales increased exponentially. Looking back on it now, it's clear this was a turning point in the acceptance and popularity of prostate stimulation. The availability of a device that allowed an individual to explore self-administered prostate massage in the privacy of their own home was a game changer. Finally, the connection between prostate stimulation and prostate pleasure had been established in a real way that people could experience for themselves. And unlike ejaculation, it even offered an alternative for those who were unable to achieve the prostate orgasm right away, as it turned out to be a very powerful amplifier for traditional orgasms, that is ejaculations as well. Better yet, the device could be used alone or with a partner and required no batteries to operate. With Aneros' popularity on the rise, in coming years, other companies also introduced their own products. Up until that time, prostate pleasure devices had been pretty much limited to repurposed vaginal G-spot toys and butt plugs. With the success of Aneros, other manufacturers began making products that were more specialized for prostate stimulation, ushering in the golden age of prostate play that continues to this day. As the word of the power of the prostate spread, Interest in manual prostate massage and pegging significantly increased as well, with couples eager to share a new kind of intimacy together. So with the history out of the way, I wanted to offer some more specifics on the centerpiece of prostate massage, the prostate orgasm. So what is it? Well, first of all, technically speaking, most orgasms involve the prostate to one degree or another. More specifically, what I'm referring to are prostate-centered, non-ejaculatory orgasms that are achieved through direct or indirect stimulation of the gland. These may be called male G-spot orgasms, P-spot orgasms, or super-O's. In some circles, the terms are interchangeable. In others, super-O's is, is, re is reserved in, for a particular intense form of a prostate orgasm. No matter what you call them, they all have some or of the following uh, characteristics in common. 
First, they're far longer in duration than the 20 plus seconds of a traditional orgasm, lasting up to minutes at a time, often generating whole body orgasmic waves of pleasure. Most commonly, they begin with an intense pleasure throughout the pelvic region, particularly the prostate, rectum, and surrounding muscles. Some of these effects that are also commonly seen include loss of sense of reality, strong emotional responses, flashes of color, involuntary large muscle contractions in legs, arms, or abdomen, a strong sense of ejaculation with no emission, involuntary vocalizations such as roars or screams, involuntary pelvic thrusting or writhing, a sense of soulful release, and energized feeling immediately following orgasm. And last, but certainly not least, these orgasms are repeatable, often occurring in multiples with little or no time in between. Here's what some of our forum members have said about it. To sum it up, P-spot orgasms may be several seconds to minutes longer than a traditional orgasm, particularly when multiples are involved. They come in all shapes and sizes. Some are small, some are large, some are single, some are multiple. Some are centered in one area while others are in another. Some are particularly intense while others are more subdued. Generally, the experience is one of a surging wave of pleasure that builds to an overwhelming level leaving one in a blissful yet energized state. Like all orgasms, these are subjective experiences that are personal and unique to the individual. So why is it that men can have multiple prostate orgasms and not have multiple ejaculatory orgasms? To understand this, it's necessary to understand the human sexual response. Now, some of you may already be familiar with this. If you're not, it essentially boils down to a stage of excitement that leads to a stage of building excitement that leads to orgasmic release that finishes off with a return back to a resting state. What's important here to note is that three of these phases, excitement, plateau, and orgasm, correspond to specific physiological changes in the body. And while genitalia may be different, these changes are generally not gender specific things like increased heart rate, constriction of blood vessels in the genitals, that sort of thing. The resolution phase is different. It's the recovery stage of the cycle that includes the body slowly returning to normal and that feeling of well-being and calm that most people associate with orgasm. In the case of people with prostates, the resolution phase also includes uh, an, uh, an ejaculatory orgasm another stage called a refractory period. Ejaculation triggers physiological changes that will make this inevitable. Now the refractory period is a timeout, which is a total loss of arousal that may last minutes or even hours. Now you start to understand what Taoist author Chia was describing uh, ejaculation as a limiter. The thing is, people assigned as female at birth and cisgender females have no such refractory period and can quickly become aroused again from any point of the resolution phase, which is why they're able to have multiple orgasms. When orgasm is achieved without ejaculation, the same becomes true for people with prostate glands as well. The first and biggest step to achieving a P-spot orgasm begins with awakening the prostate, which amounts to making it more accustomed and responsive to physical stimulation. While there are some people that may have this from the start, most will require some time and patience to acquire it. Stimulation of this type can take many forms, which I'll discuss a little bit later, but the important thing to remember here is, no matter the source, the process can't be forced. It's something that the body and mind must warm up to. Viewing this as a flow chart, the journey from prostate stimulation to orgasm can be represented this way. As you can see, prostate awakening is the key intermediary step, which not only involves sensory nerve receptivity, but the interpretation of the new sensation by the brain as something arousing. For most people, this will be a learned response, hence the term rewiring that is often seen in our form and on other sites dedicated to prostate pleasure. Once the prostate is awakened, 
Stimulation has the effect of building arousal all the way to orgasm. For those who are advanced in the ways of prostate pleasure, rewiring can be taken to a whole new dimension. Such individuals are capable of using a variety of different stimuli, including seemingly non-sexual stimuli, to create a super O. Some have even reported using thought alone to trigger it. How's that possible? Well, it's not unusual for thoughts to create physical responses. Surely everyone is familiar with salivating at the thought of delicious food or becoming aroused by erotic thoughts at some point in their lives. In a similar way, memories of orgasmic sensations are themselves stimulating. Mentally focusing on such thoughts can produce physical sensations, which in turn lead to arousal. Follow that far enough down the line, you're into an orgasm. While the super O may be the holy grail of prostate massage, it's by no means the only type of fulfillment that it has to offer. Prostate massage is also an excellent amplifier, just about for every type of erotic endeavor that you can name. Bear in mind that certain types of prostate massage have a strong anal component to them as well, providing stimulation of the prostate plexus and the pedendal nerve simultaneously. Furthermore, I should add that stimulating the gland can lead to harder erections and powerful, more satisfying ejaculations with greater output of ejaculate. Whether it's giving or receiving oral, hand action, kissing, or intercourse, everything goes better with prostate massage. Lastly, while it's not common, bear in mind that some folks are able to ejaculate from prostate massage alone as well. For those who are experienced with anal play, prostate massage is easily integrated into solo or couple sessions. After all, it's a small step around three to three and a half inches from the anal opening to the posterior of the, po of the prostate. Aficionados of anal fun may already be vaguely familiar with prostate stimulations from the glancing contact of a vibrator or dildo or other anal toy. Before explain, exploring prostate massage though, one should be mindful of several things. To start with, the prostate is not a penis. And while that might seem self-evident, many people make the mistake of approaching the practice in a similar way to penis stimulation. While harder, faster, longer may work for a hand job, it's not the case with prostate massage. The truth is the prostate is more responsive to stimulation in the subtle to moderate range. And while slightly more elevated intensities can be pleasant, they shouldn't be maintained for long periods of time as the prostate can be easily desensitized. Beyond that, I should add that vigorous, sustained, high intensity manip manipulation of the prostate can be harmful and it really should be avoided. Prostate massage techniques fall into two categories, manual and device assisted. Manual massage by hand usually requires the assistance of a partner or a body worker. While it's possible to do this on your own, it's not particularly practical as it's difficult to position oneself for proper access. And even when penetration is achieved, say by someone lying on their side with long fingers or thumbs, it's difficult to maintain for long, very long. In most cases, manual prostate massage will require the assistance of another. In approaching manual prostate massage, all the usual suggestions regarding anal play uh, apply here as well. The receiver may want to start with a warm bath or a shower to help relax and clean the anal area. While internal douching is not strictly necessary, particularly for those with regular bowel habits, it can often provide the receiver with some peace of mind. Giver should have clean hands with trimmed, filed fingernails to avoid snags. Gloves are often preferred for convenience and sanitary purposes. For the sake of comfort and mobility, always use a good quality personal lubricant and lots of it. If a glove is to be used, make sure to use a water-based type of lubricant or one that's compatible with the glove. While there are several positions that work well, having the receiver lie on its back, Leg spread and knees slightly bent is often a good place to start. Having a towel for him to lie on is always a good idea too. Apply lubricant li liberally to the glove or finger and massage and lubricate the anus externally. Now spending some time on this step eases penetration and adds to the sensual nature of the experience. So go slow and enjoy it. Again, apply more lubrication as needed. 
slowly introduce a fingertip, working it in and out with progressively deeper strokes. Depending on the comfort and experience of the receiver, you may want to use two or more fingers. Doing this provides additional stimulation and can lessen fatigue for the giver. But if you're new to this, one finger to start. Encourage the receiver to relax and breathe deeply. Did I mention to apply more lube? <laughs> Generally, uh, use gentle massage on the anal canal and inner sphincter. And after several minutes, you'll feel the muscles start to relax under your pressure. Extend a finger straight into the rectum two or three inches, then curl it upward in a come here motion, and you'll engage a small bump, larger in older men. This is the prostate. The surface should feel smooth and rounded. Run your finger gently along the, per the perimeter of the gland, exploring the entire surface with gentle sweeping strokes from side to side, allowing the receiver to become accustomed to the sensations. As you proceed, try using different degrees of pressure, being sure to communicate while listening for nonverbal cues as well. If this is received well, after a time, try changing up, moving fingers in and out, using the same sweeping technique as you engage the prostate. After some more time, try changing up again, moving your finger in a come here motion as you pull outward, straightening your finger as you thrust inward, letting the pad of the finger gently skate across the prostate surface. Repeat this and observe the results. Lastly, move your hand in and out while keeping the pad of the, your finger on the surface of the prostate, as if you're drawing ovals. Again, experiment with different degrees of pressure, paying close attention to the responses of the receiver. These are just a few techniques that are commonly used, but this should get you started. Now, when attempting a P-spot orgasm with manual massage, having feedback between partners is absolutely essential. Ongoing communication will help identify the most productive techniques and provide uh, focus on the kind of stroke and pressure that give the most pleasure. Furthermore, commit yourself to the idea of it being a process up front and accept that a prostate orgasm may not happen in the first session. Those who are experienced with manual prostate massage have often revealed that it takes time to produce a P-spot orgasm, time to awaken the prostate, and time to refine the best technique. So give it time. Don't rush. And don't forget, prostate massage can also be combined with stimulation of the penis for an explosive ejaculation. And it's always a terrific way to end a session, too. So again, experiment and explore. Device-assisted prostate massage products fall into two categories stationary and dynamic. Stationary devices are those that remain in place inside the rectum during use. Dynamic devices are those that move in and out of the rectum when worked by hand or in response to a user's contractions. Hand-operated devices are fairly straightforward, but they do have some limitations you should be aware of. First, most ordinary dildos and vibrators are relatively straight, so it's difficult to maneuver them in order to reach the prostate directly. G-spot or P-spot dildos and vibrators, on the other hand, are normally angled, so they engage the prostate more directly. However, bear in mind that the physics of an instrument with a straight shaft and a bent end is essentially that of a lever arm, that is, a device that produces torque. What this means is a great deal of force can be transmitted up to the tip with a minimal amount of energy from the outside. So be careful with the amount of pressure that's used with these kinds of devices. If you are the receiver interacting with a partner, be certain to communicate with them throughout the session as they may be unaware of the amount of pressure that you are feeling. And if you're using a device that vibrates, always keep in mind the dual nature of vibration. It can be stimulating and desensitizing. Don't forget, vibrators are also used for pain management, for sore muscles and the like. This is an issue with the prostate play because the prostate is actually desensitized by vigorous stimulation, such as that from a strong vibrator operating at one continuous level. One is not careful, it's possible to desensitize or numb the receiver's prostate, masking the true amount of pressure that's being brought to bear, which can risk injury. If you enjoy vibration, make sure that you're using a variable or dynamic mode, one that is constantly changing. At the same time, alternate between slower and slightly faster in inward strokes, occasionally leaving the device in place for short periods too. 
using this approach will ultimately be more stimulating and avoid the potential for sensory overload. The class of products uh, that I just described are best for amplifying ejaculation with or without a partner, but may also be used to induce prostate orgasm as well. Aneros products are designed so they move in and out of the rectum in a dynamic response to user contractions. They stimulate and massage four erogenous zones, the perineum, the anus, the kundalini spot, which is an acupressure spot behind the anus, and the prostate simultaneously. They're unique in that they are precisely designed for male internal anatomy, providing focused massage while driven by anal contractions only. They are responsive to voluntary and involuntary contractions of the most subtle kind and can create a positive sensory feedback loop, transforming internal movement into instantaneous stimulation. It's this capacity that is responsible for Aneros' reputation as a catalyst for producing prostate orgasms or super O's. They're also great for amplifying ejaculatory orgasms with or without a partner. Stationary devices are products that are inserted and while they may move once inside, they are basically retained in the rectum during use. These include butt plugs and vibrating and non-vibrating prostate massagers. Butt plugs were originally designed for anal expansion and to provide a sense of fullness in the rectum. While not created as prostate massagers per se, the sheer size of some of the plugs these days does result in some pro uh, prostate contact, and for that reason, I've included them in this category. There's also a large group of prostate massagers, vibrating and non-vibrating, designed for focused prostate stimulation that are stationary devices. Some of these include moving parts for more variety in prostate and anal stimulation, and many include external anal vibration and perineum vibration as well. Most of these come with wireless remotes with abundance of patterns to choose from. Again, the movement of these devices is dependent upon onboard electronics that will essentially stay in place once inside the rectum. These products are best at amplifying ejaculations with or without a partner. When it comes to achieving a prostate orgasm or super O, you're best chances of success will be with the dynamic methods. That is with a hand or something that is driven by hand or a device that involves dynamic movement. And it makes sense, right? There's simply more control with these methods. This is not to say that you can't have an absolutely stellar ejaculation using a static or stationary device. But in my experience of moderating a forum and having seen the com comments of tens of thousands of men on this topic, I, I will tell you, the key to the Super O normally resides with something that can be easily manipulated. Having said that, there are a number of parameters or factors to keep in mind. Doing so will improve your chances for success and provide you with the most pleasure. Pressure. Just to recap, the prostate responds best to pressure in the subtle to moderate range. So avoiding high levels of pressure, particularly continuous pressure, as this can hurt someone. Beyond that, vary it. Change it up. Generally, this is the most stimulating approach, and it usually avoids the issue of desensitizing the prostate that I uh, mentioned before. Stroke. This relates to the way that the finger or device engages the gland. Is it moving from side to side, or is it moving up and down? Is it circling around the perimeter? In most cases, what feels best is a subjective thing, so you really have to explore and find out what works best for you or your partner. But really, that's part of the fun, too. Speed. Like pressure, speed is another factor that is generally best in the slow to moderate range. Do not be fooled by adult videos you've seen that feature actors jackhammering one another anally. While prostate massage does involve anal penetration, that's not the primary focus of it. Bear in mind, when you do see that kind of action in an adult video, generally it involves a device or a penis that's making indirect contact with the prostate. What true prostate massage is about is focused stimulation of the gland. So keep that in mind. And as with other factors, using varying degrees of speed usually works very well. But just know, a little goes a long way. Depth. Depth is something there's a lot of misinformation about. The prostate is located around two to two and a half inches inside the rectum. The anal canal is about one inch in length. 
the prostate itself is about three centimeters, centimeters, which is slightly over an inch. All in all, that makes the farthest reaches of the prostate about four and a half inches, measuring from the external anal opening. So it's not necessary to drive deeply into the rectum. If you do, you'll be missing the point, quite literally. Depth is really only a consideration in as much as you will be stimulating a different area of the gland, which as I mentioned is really only about an inch in length. So pulling out feels good, of course, but going in farther, too much farther, really isn't very productive insofar as prostate stimulation goes. Oh, and so when you see products that are five, six, seven inches long, these are not prostate devices. These are anal rectal devices, but that's really another topic. Vibration. Now, I went over this one in depth before, but again, vibration is yet another one of those factors that deserves moderation. So if you're using it, go light and always use vibra uh, variable vibration patterns. Successful prostate massage is about striking the right balance with all of these elements that I just mentioned. And by balance, I don't mean going 100% on any of them. Think of these things like seasonings. Use them to taste. Use them modestly. Remember what I mentioned when I started this section. The prostate is not a penis. So be prepared to achieve arousal on different terms. What kind of terms? Long ago, I wrote a thread in our forum about viewing arousal like resonance, like something that reverberates. I'm sure everyone is familiar with that old parlor trick where a group of friends is sitting down after a long night of drinking and someone has a brandy snifter or a piece of crystal on a table with some fluid in it. And they begin to slowly rub their finger on the rim of the glass. And what happens? A beautiful tone emerges, it sings. If you've done this yourself, you know that it takes a moist finger and just the right amount of pressure to achieve the perfect amount of friction that creates resonance in the glass. If you continue at just the right speed, working in harmony with the sound, it builds in strength. Push it too hard or too softly, too fast or too slow, and you lose it. Achieving a prostate orgasm is about using stimulation to create internal resonance within the body which is essentially arousal. From there, it's about responding to that internal resonance in a harmonic way, a way that allows arousal to build on top of itself over and over and over again. That is the key to a prostate orgasm. Prostate massage can add a new dimension of intimacy to any relationship and can allow you to discover a different realm of sexual fulfillment. If you've never experienced it, I strongly encourage you to try it. One last point, avoid intoxication during these sessions, whether you are the giver or receiver. No, not just as a matter of safety, but to maximize pleasure. The truth is many of what we call the precursor sensations are subtle. And if you're loaded, you may miss them, which I'm here to tell you as one who's been there, it's like missing the flight to paradise. So go out and explore and enjoy. And as you approach this, be open and attentive to everything that comes your way and things will reveal themselves to you.